Uh, hello everyone, this is Rajiv Eskana for Immigration.com, Law Offices of Rajiv Eskana PC. I had been uh, meaning to um, share with you a few things about what we are noticing in the last few months. A whole flurry of I-140 denials, intents to revoke. Um, so it appears that USCIS has gone back and revisited even approved I-140s. What happens is, in these cases, an employee who has nothing to do with the employer's wrongdoing, if there is a wrongdoing, if there is any wrongdoing in fact, the employee gets stuck. There was a case that I, um, actually we represented a company recently, we've done this for three or four companies, but one company in particular comes to mind. They bought out another company, I think a hundred or so employees, and I was actually involved in the merger and acquisition, and I suggested that they should escrow some money just to make sure that if something goes wrong with the immigration compliance, we would have attorney's fees to fight the problem. And it did work out because in fact there was a problem. What happened was what the guy who sold the company had some issues. Apparently he had several companies and he had some issues that were not brought to light until this company who hired us started filing their cases. When they started filing I-140s, USCIS came up with fraud allegations against the guy who sold the company. So what happens in these cases is that <clears throat> the employee could lose the right to AC-21, excuse me, <clears throat> if the revocation is for fraud. They could lose their priority date if the revocation is for fraud and they could lose the right to extend their H-1s if the revocation is for fraud. So the employee is the one who gets hurt the most. <clears throat> so when we got retained, there were I think about, I don't remember the number, I think 20 or 25 cases. So we went in and we argued it out with the government and um, happily all cases were approved. Uh, each, each, each set of circumstances is unique. Sometimes we can get approvals, sometimes we cannot get approvals. It doesn't, this, this narr narrative doesn't mean that we're always going to get approval. But I just wanted to talk to you guys and explain to you that this is happening. Don't think just because you have an I-140 approval, you're good, okay? So this morning, as I was going over um, uh, the content on immigration.com, I noticed a comment from our forums, those of you who don't know, uh, these are our forums, immigration.com uh, and uh, forums.immigration.com. So basically, this person, Manish underscore 13, uh, has said this. 180 days on EAD will get over next week and I plan to go on AC21. Sponsoring employer is being inquired into for some fraud. No one knows exactly what's going on. He's going over to a new company. And these are his four questions. I think it's relevant for the whole community. So that's why I'm recording this. Will this fraud affect my 485 application if I get, will I get RFEs? Well, first of all, no, no one can predict whether or not you will get an RFE. Will the fraud affect your 485 depends on whether or not the I-140 is considered to be fraudulent. You know, the biggest problem in these cases is because the I-140 is the employee's application, let me rephrase that, employer's application, the employee doesn't even get a notice. So before you know it, you, you get a notice of revocation of I-485 because without your knowledge as an employee, the I-140 has been revoked. This is very unfortunate. So it's a good idea for those of you who are moving or who want better information or handle on your I-140s, stay in touch with your lawyers. Make sure they know where you are and make sure they send you a copy of the I-140 RFE. In Virginia, I am required by law to allow equal access to both the employer and the employee. So if there is an RFE, 
by law I'm required to give it to, or by ethical obligation I'm required to give it to uh, a copy to the employee as well. Um, I'm not sure if the bar would frown upon redacting certain portions that might be very specific to the employer's tax history, etc. But normally, we need to give you enough information so that you can protect yourself. So that should be the law pretty much, or that should be the ethical obligation for all lawyers. Therefore, you should be able to get some information if there is an I-140 revocation notice or intent to revoke issued by USCIS. Okay. Problem is, if the I-140 gets revoked for fraud, everything goes away. Your right to carry forward your priority date, your right to get H-1 extensions, your right to do an AC-21 successfully, all of that goes away. Okay. Um, however, if the employer is willing to appeal, then while the appeal is pending, you can go ahead and keep getting your H-1 extensions. Keep this in mind. Does it matter where you are shifting using AC-21? I, I feel that must be a question directed to geographical location. It does not. Does a full-time contracting offer matter? Well, you should not have a 1099. You should be on a W-2. Uh, of course, there is language in the Yates Memorandum of May 2005 which talks about, which is the only definitive memo really on AC-21, um, which talks about doing an AC-21 transfer over to a company you yourself own. But there's a whole slew of issues connected with that. Actually, I think I have a lot of information on, on my blogs also on this. And the last question is, does a big or a small company matter? Uh, in my view, it does not. Not for AC-21 purposes. Okay. So, by the way, um, I also want to add one thing that there was a there was a case recently from a federal court. Um, I don't remember the case name of the case. I have it in my records, where the court was quite um, offended by USCIS coming back after several years and revoking an I-140 that has already been approved. I think there are some really really uh, tricky legal problems with USCIS revoking cases that have long been settled. So be that as, as it may, all I can do is sensitize you to the issues and concerns. Feel free to bring up whatever you have in our next uh, uh, free community conference call. Uh, information about community conference calls is, let's see, it's right here. So you can, you can take this link. Uh, free community conference call link right here <clears throat> and that these are all the recordings from past times okay well good talking with all of you thank you